Shri Kumar is an assistant professor of philosophy in the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. He is a gold medalist for MA Philosophy from the Mahatma Gandhi University, Kottayam. He did his MPhil and PhD in Philosophy from the Central University of Hyderabad and specializes in the areas of philosophy of language, continental philosophy and hermeneutics. He has been into the academic profession since 1995 and has taught in Sri Shankaracharya University of Sanskrit, Kaladi, Kerala and Bitspilani, Rajasthan before joining the IIT Midras in 2003. Dr. Sri Kumar has published articles in various journals and has presented papers in national and international seminars. Some of the courses he offers include European Philosophy, Contemporary German Philosophy, Introduction to Indian Philosophy, Philosophical Hermeneutics, Philosophy and Critical Theory and Philosophy of Language. Welcome to the UGC lecture series in philosophy on Phenomenology and Existentialism part 35. This uh, present episode will address the following issues, understanding and design. In the previous episode, we have uh, concentrated on the concept of moods, how a mood, the concept of mood is important in understanding the structure of design. So, here we will take up another very important concept, understanding. Understanding is so central as far as design or being in the world is concerned. So, we will see that in this episode, understanding and use in what way understanding is related to the concept of use, then the as structure of understanding. So, it is normally said that we do not understand any object as the object is, but we always understand the object as something. We understand it as something and the moment I say that I, I understand something as something, I what I implicate is that I have a use with that object. That is this is one very important aspect which Heidegger is trying to highlight in this context. Understanding and meaning of course, understanding is related with the concept of meaning and understanding and interpretation. It is normally said that understanding is interpretative or rather these two are not two different phenomena, not two different processes, because but they go always together. Understanding is necessarily interpretative and interpretation leads to understanding, design and understanding. Design is I repeat the being in the world and here the question is what is meant by understanding or what role does understanding have in our very concept of design or the structure of design. And it is stated that understanding is one of the modes of existence of design it is one way in which design exists or the very concept of existence of design can be conceived as something which exists with understanding. And uh, it has to be underlined in this context that no other entity can understand only design can understand or design relates itself to the world with the help of understanding or with understanding. So, all of designs relationship with the world involves an understanding of the world. It is very important to understand the structure of being of design. This concept of understanding is very important to understand the structure of the being of design. So, what do you mean by the structure of the being of design? Design, the concept of design or the very idea of design is that design is a being in the world, a being there who finds itself in a place located in a particular place. And there when you try to analyze the structure of this being of man, structure of this being of design, we realize that understanding plays a very important role. What is that role? We are going to see that. What is understanding? And understanding here in this context is uh, used, the word understanding is used not in the sense science understands and explains things. See for example, in the case of science any object in this world will be understood in a particular way. For example, the common table salt 
which we use in our food as a taste maker is sodium chloride for the sciences. So, sciences gives them all the sciences understand the nature and world and objects in the world in a peculiar way and often it is believed that or often it is being asserted that the scientific understanding is the right form of understanding. This is an idea which Heidegger would object in this context. Sodium chloride or table salt, table salt I mean if somebody claims that table salt is sodium chloride and that is the way it has to be understood. A hermeneutician, an existential philosopher like Heidegger would object, because table salt has a particular use in our life and our understanding of this object is always associated and related with the use, the way in which we use, the way in which we compose to that object. So, that is very important for Heidegger. See, here I take an example of uh, Dostoevsky's uh, famous novel, Brothers Karamazov. This is Dostoevsky and uh, many critics consider Brothers Karamazov as uh, the most important work of Dostoevsky. So, I am just taking it as an example. What do you mean by understanding Dostoevsky's Brothers Karamazov? Because you know in the case of sciences, many of this scientific principles, if you ask what is Charles Lowe or what is meant by relativity, principle of relativity, you can provide a scientific understanding, a scientific way of explaining what it is. But when it comes to objects like this, say for example, what is meant by understanding the second world war or brothers Karamazov, all these are texts which we try to understand. But here we use the word understanding in a totally different way. It is not a mere brain activity as a sciences content. When I say that I understand say for example, I will take an, another example uh, Picasso's paintings or Raja Rivarma's painting, famous painting of Raja Rivarma, I try to understand. What is it? For the sciences it is nothing but as I have already explained in one of my previous episodes that it is nothing but certain light waves, certain it can be I mean the entire process can be explained with the help of some scientific procedure what is happening when we see it, what happens to our brain, what happens to our retina, in what way our body is affected by all these activities, all these things what is happening in the world. So, that is the way science would understand it, but the hall of being Heidegger says the hall of being of design is involved in understanding. So, when I understand Picasso's or Raja Revivarma's painting, the hall of my being is involved in that understanding and that is the case when I understand a bottle of water, that is the case when I understand the camera which is placed in front of me, that is the case when I understand the computer which is placed in front of me, my whole being is involved, I know what I am doing with that or what I can do with that, my possibilities are all exposed. So, for me for example, I will take this example of computer which is there in front of me, this computer is something which I use, I have certain particular uses with this computer. So, my understanding of this computer is always associated with those users, those the ways in which I have used it in the past, the ways I can use it in the future, anything for that matter, even a glass of water which is placed in front of me, what is it? It is not H2O which is a scientific understanding of it, it is something which quenches my thirst. I have a use, I can use it for certain other purposes as well. So, my whole being is involved when I understand, when I compose, when I relate with the object and understand it. This is what Heidegger is highlighting. We understand things in the world and not just brain states. So, the computer which is placed in the world and the entire world is involved or a painting of Raja Rivarma which is placed in a gallery, the entire context, the stage in which this happens, all these are involved in it, my understanding of it, the value of this painting, everything. We understand things as something or other, see this painting is something for me or this glass of water is something for me, this computer is something for me, for me it is it means something. So, meaning is communicated in my understanding. So, I could say that there are three things that are involved, number one I understand things based on the ways I compose to things. Number two, 
there is an element of interpretation involved because I relate I mean I understand things by means of relating to things in definite ways and number 3 meaning is essentially involved in all process of interpretation and understanding. It is meaning that is precisely understood quote unquote in the process of understanding. So, here we come across the R as structure of understanding. I understand it as something the water as that object which will quench my thirst or uh, the food which will satisfy my hunger as and uh, so that is why I repeat interpretation is involved. I always interpret things when I understand them and I how do I interpret by relating things with my life with my background. So, understanding and interpretations are ways of acting in the world. So, this is where I repeat the last sentence ways of acting in the world. This is where Heidegger is a really different philosopher from the hall of traditional philosophy because the importance given for action. So, understanding and interpretations are not just intellectual activities which are carried out by philosophers contemplating thinkers who are not affected by their understanding and interpretation they just understand things from a position. So, this is an idea which is communicated which is handed down to us by the traditional epistemological philosophies of the west that when you understand something you are understanding it by differentiating yourself from it by distancing yourself from it by objectifying that object from you. So, you are an impartial spectator, but here Heidegger says that understanding and interpretation involves acting they are ways of acting in the world why because when I understand something I understand it as something as something to do with my life. So, my life comes into picture and all everything is understood from the perspective of my life. Our experience of the world is pervaded by an understanding of what things are or how they are used, what things are or how they are used, used by me in my life to carry out my projects. See I know that this computer I can use this computer for watching movie for example, I just want to watch a movie and I just connect my pen drive in which I have saved the movie file and connect it to the computer and watch it. So, I know that this computer has a definite use for me and on another occasion I will use this computer for editing certain photographs certain video files and on another occasion I use this computer for typing. So, in all such occasions I know the users I understand the computer as something which helps me to type to edit to view pictures to listen to music to view movies etcetera etcetera. So, all these are all my understandings are related to the ways in which I am going to use this object and this is essentially the case with every other object. The water is there for me to drink, the food is there for me to eat, the camera is there for me to take my picture and everything. All our understanding takes place in the background of an understanding that has already taken place. So, from here onwards we are entering into another domain which is very important in the rest of hermeneutics philosophy which is very important in the whole tradition of hermeneutic philosophy and Heidegger initiates that a concept which has been taken by Gadamer later and uh, Gadamer considers that this concept is very important in the whole tradition of hermeneutics. Rick, so, so, we were discussing about the background of an understanding that has already taken place the importance of such a background in all future understanding. So, see here we can see that there is a clear deconstruction or rather to use a better word clear destruction of the metaphysical tradition of the west a program which Heidegger very consciously takes up in his life. What he says is that in the traditional approach the ideal of understanding has always been impartial understanding objectifying the object and then understand it from a distance so that you can view the object from a distance separating yourself from it not relating uh, yourself to that. So, this form of an understanding Heidegger says is impossible rather he says that 
there is every understanding presupposes a background, a background of an already understood meanings, an understanding that has already taken place, a pre understood meaning, a domain of pre understood meanings. This is a presupposition for all understanding, it is not just a presupposition for Heidegger, that is very interesting because Heidegger says that it is not only a presupposition, it is a precondition, without that you cannot. So, pre understood meanings as a necessary background for all understanding. So, the sign who is a being in the world, who lives in the world, emits of things, and the sign finds all the objects around it has some uses for it in its life. So, what is it, what is meant by having some uses in its life? So, there is already a life that has been lived, that is the past. If you try to understand the being of the sign as a temporal entity, something which we will take up in the next episode, the temporality, the importance of time in Heidegger's philosophy, that is another very important concept to understand the sign. I will take up it in the next episode, but here I would focus on this, the context of pre-understood meaning, the life which I have already lived, which forms as a background and which this background is very important to understand something which is absolutely new. So, the new which is alien, which is foreign is placed in front of me, how do I understand it? I already have a domain of familiar meanings, which I have already experienced, the life which I have already lived in and this life which I have already lived in constitutes the domain of pre understood meaning, which are capable of these meanings are capable of legitimizing all that is encountered anew. So, when I encountered something new, I try to legitimize it, I try to understand it by legitimizing it, by relating it with the background, with the context of this pre understood meaning. Suddenly, the object which is there in front of me acquires new dimensions of meaning in the context of or from the background of already understood meanings. So, this pre understood meanings, this domain of pre understood meanings is extremely vital in all understanding. I am free to choose what to do in the world, because I understand my possibilities in the world. So, there is a, an idea of my possibilities in the world, the world in which I live. So, I the life which I live in this world, I find myself in a continuity, I find myself in a world amidst of others, other human beings and other objects. And I know my possibilities in this world, my knowledge about my possibilities depend on my past life, the domain of pre understood meanings. So, I can whatever is there in my future life, I can choose from the alternatives. So, that is not I am free to choose what to do in the world, because I understand my possibilities in the world. And this understanding of my possibilities in the world is related to the domain of pre understood meanings. Without a context of pre understood meanings, I find the world confusing and fail to do anything in it. So, this is what I said, first of all I have to legitimize it, the new thing that is encountered has to be familiarized, because it is right now new, foreign, alien, I do not know anything about it and I have to make it familiar and how do I make it familiar, by relating the new with the old, with the already existing domain. And this relating, this process of relating will make the newly encountered foreign alien domain suddenly looking familiar, because now I understand that I have something to do with that. It suddenly becomes familiar to me, because I relate it with my already familiar context of pre understood meanings. This pre existing context of meaning both offers possibilities and imposes constraints. So, already I know that my possible I know my possibilities. So, some of the possibilities I do not really anticipate. So, the context of pre understood meaning on the one hand offers possibilities. I have an understanding about myself, I have an understanding about my life and I know how objects can be used. See for example, I know that the object which is in front of me, the cup of water, a glass of water, it can be used for drinking, but there are some other things, other purposes can be served for the same object. Say for example, I can use this water to water a plant, 
that is another use and uh, similarly, I have an helmet here is a helmet which I use this helmet which I use when I ride a bike motorcycle. This helmet I use when I ride a motorcycle has certain purposes for me in my life and I know what is it. So, my understanding in a sense happens because there are certain possibilities. On the other hand this helmet can be used for other purposes as well, I can use this helmet to hit somebody. So, the helmet can be equally understood as an object to hit somebody, but that is not the normal way in which it is understood. So, that is why the pre existing context of meanings not only offers possibilities, but also imposes constraints in my understanding. Understanding is related to us our life the way we use the world. So, that is what the way we use the world, I do not use the helmet to hit somebody, I use it when I write for my safety. So, as far as I am concerned my understanding is constrained somebody can say, because I always understand it in the way I use it that is true, it can be used for some other purposes. So, that is why it at the same time the world and the pre understood meaning offers possibilities and imposes constraint. Understanding is a projecting upon possibilities, it is a projecting upon possibilities. So, an object is given I project my possibilities to that, so that I know what all users this object has to me. I have already given the example of this computer, the possible ways in which you I can use this computer. Number one I can use it to watch a movie, number two I can use it to watch some pictures, some paintings or some photographs, number three I can use it for listening music, number four I can use it for typing something, I can use it for programming something. I have several uses and these are all my possibilities. So, when I what I mean by understanding the computer, I understand this this computer as this 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 which means I project my possibilities or I project upon possibilities in the way I can use it. To understand something is to grasp the possible ways that it can be used, I have already explained this and it is the way I can use it. So, I essentially relate it with my life and what I mean by relating something with my life, relating something with the pre existing pre understood domain of meaning. This is the perspective of my pre understood meaning, see here I am giving an example understanding an object, it is a sunflower and uh, Heliandus annus that is probably it is uh, biannual name, the biological botanical name and that is one way to understand it, the biologist would understand it and a biologist would uh, when he or she is a biologist, of course a biologist is also a human being who is capable of appreciating the beauty of this flower, but when he or she is a biologist the beauty of this flower ought not attract him or her. What is more important is to understand its scientific features and other factors, but I can always understand it as an object with some yellow flaps and a thick bud like thing in the middle, but this is not the way in which I normally understand it. It is a sunflower for me and I know its uses probably you know one of its uses is that I can make sunflower oil from this and it is so beautiful, it uh, adds to the plant diversity in this country in our in, in the world. So, all these are the ways in which I understand it, I know its uses and uh, understanding is not essentially a cognitive act. So, this is what Heidegger is trying to repeatedly argue and assert, understanding is not essentially a cognitive act in the sense the epistemological tradition has always been projecting it as. Then what is it? We habitually do things and many such occasions presuppose an understanding of things. Say for example, take the example when somebody brings an ice cream to me or something to eat with a spoon and a fork, I will quite automatically mechanically start eating the food with the spoon and I do not know what a spoon is, I am not consciously aware of that I am understanding this food, the plate in which it is served and the spoon by which I eat all these things are mechanical processes habitually, I just start eating it without reflecting much about it. But what Heidegger says is that to use it in a habitual manner that is presupposed by an understanding of what all these things are. I know that 
I understand that it is food something which I have a use with I can eat it, it is a plate where I carry it, it is a spoon by which I eat it. And again we use a spoon to eat and to stir, but it can also be used for hitting somebody which does not figure part of understanding it. This is what I previously said with the example of my helmet which is normally used for certain things, but I can always use it for some other purposes which are quite unusual, but still I can use it and understanding it in that fashion, but normally I do not understand things in that fashion. So, that is why the world the context of pre understood meanings all these things impose certain limitations certain constraints on our understanding. The world we live in constraints the range of what is possible. So, understanding is always related to what is possible because as Heidegger says understanding is nothing but projection of possibilities, but the world imposes certain constraints on this possibilities the things which I can normally do with an object. This camera though it is a very costly equipment it has got only a few uses, but I can always lift it and hit somebody that is not the part of the way in which that is not of course, the way in which a camera has to be understood, but it can be still used for that purposes as well. So, the world imposes certain constraints. Now, we will briefly look up the concept of meaning meaning of something depends on the world. Example the painting Mona Lisa by famous painter and artist and also even a scientist Leonardo da Vinci. So, this is not just a stimulations produced by sound waves. What do you mean by understanding this great painting Mona Lisa? Not just stimulations produced by light waves. Its meaning depends on the world, the context, the history, its cultural value. I all I know so many things about this, I know the history of painting, I know the history of this painting particular painting work, I know who Da Vinci is, I know the importance of this painting in the cultural history of the west. All these things see number of books were written about this painting, the history of this painting. So, all these are part of my understanding of Mona Lisa or the meaning of Mona Lisa. So, the worldly context are extremely vital in determining the meaning. So, this is what precisely is saying meaning is not something which is imposed upon object by you personally or individually or subjectively, but the world plays a very important role in worldly context are extremely vital in determining the meaning and how the world around its objects and its people are related to me, how people conceive the importance of this painting all these are important for me to understand that my own possibilities for being something are also important. I choose to become something by projecting me to the possibilities open by my world. So, I repeat the last one I choose to become something by projecting me to the possibilities open by my world. The uh, my world or every world any world in which I find myself offers me certain possibilities of using it its objects and understanding it. Now, let us summarize the topics which we have discussed in the uh, present episode the as structure of understanding a very prominent issue which we have discussed today is this the as structure of understanding the four conceptions of understanding the four conceptions in, in this context means the pre understood the context of or the domain of pre understood meanings. So, which act as a precondition for all understanding then understanding and use the projection of possibilities it has been said that everything when I understand something I understand it as something and what you mean by that is that I can use this something this object for some certain purposes and interpretation and understanding. Let us consider some questions which we can ask from this episode number one what does it mean to say that the whole of being of the sign is involved in understanding number two what is meant by projection into possibilities number three why is it said that understanding is not essentially a cognitive act. With this we will wind up this episode thank you.